y'all. It's the EP Famous Jackie and Stephanie. And we're here to talk about how to budget mm -hmm. for a wedding. Dun, dun, dun. So here we go. If you want to check out more, make sure you stay tuned in. We're going to give you a lot of good content. So it's very important talking about budget. So let's talk about budgets and how they affect different locations, different cities. So the national average for a wedding is in 2019 was 30,000. But so national average was $30,000. Mm -hmm. So here in Tennessee, our national average is around $22,000 with that averaging out about $156 per guest. Um, so in other cities like Mississippi, like Mississippi is your lowest is the lowest. And that average was 12,500, 12,500 with an average. What would that be like per guest? That's about $90, $90 per guest. Mm -hmm. And then we move to the concrete jungle itself. One of the most expensive places to live It's New York. Mm -hmm. Um, so their average per wedding is 88,000. <laughs> It's or about 630 per guest. That's a good down payment for a house. Yeah. So. Or a house. Or a house. How about that? Um, so those are just the little stats. So we're not going to break it down too much for you all, but just kind of give you some key things to consider when you're making your budget. And the first thing first is you want to sit down and have a, a good conversation about what's your limit. What is your max? What, what is can your max? you afford? And you may have to have the uncomfortable conversation maybe, um, cause you know, some people don't really like talking about money, nope. but you may need to you know, talk with family, uh, groom side, bride side. Um, you know, it's 2020, not necessarily the traditional role of the bride's family pays. Um, it's kind of all inclusive now. It's all, everybody needs to chip in Whoever and contribute in. because everybody's going to be partying. So everybody should pay the party. Um, so yeah, have that conversation about what's your max, who's contributed to this wedding, how much you can save and start there. Um, cause you want to have those conversations. Um, the budget is the number one thing. You the should budget. Do. So if you always say, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Everybody <laughs> knows me. I say that quite often because you got to create a plan. And if you don't create a plan, well, you're may not intentionally be planning to fail, but you're going to fail. So but there was this cute little meme we posted a while back ago that was just like, you can't, what was it? You can't break a budget if you don't make one. <laughs> but make the budget, Keo. Make the budget. So, because if not, you don't it like the little things will just add up. They will add up, and as they add up, you just you start spiraling. And you feel spiraling, like you're hemorrhaging money, and then you you need to enjoy your engagement, not stress. Not stress. So Princeton and I spent six months engaged before we even talked about setting a wedding date, because the questions will never stop once you get engaged. Well, now when you're dating, it's when are you gonna get engaged when you're gonna get married and then you get engaged and it's when's the wedding when's the wedding and then you have the wedding and it's when, when you, have, you a kids. have a baby and then you have a baby and then it's when, when you, you have, have another baby. baby it's like the questions never ever stop so just it's okay to tell people to like pump your brakes and then if you have too many babies you're like when are you gonna stop, having, gonna babies? stop having babies so, <laughs> you can't win folks so it's okay to tell people to stay in their lane and mind their business it's okay so that you can enjoy this time, you know, it's, you want to enjoy it. Enjoy your engagement. Enjoy your engagement. But, and then hire a wedding planner. But you do need to start with a budget. With the budget, right? It so make your engagement a lot better. A lot better. So one thing that is a great benefit, added benefit to having a planner is they're going to keep you on target concerning your budget. They're going to help you manage the numbers and and everything that comes with it. And a good thing that we have with our clients is we have a nice little portal. Well, over 75% of our clients aren't local to us. So we deal with a lot of out-of-state brides. And it's great because we have a portal where it can manage the contracts, we manage the numbers, we itemize everything down so that you can know exactly where you're spending your money, um, full checklist of what you should be working on. And also it's a great for guest mm -hmm. list management tool. Yes. So on average, you could probably start out maybe thinking about a hundred dollars per guest. Per guest. Um, but you also gotta ask yourself some tough questions about 
who, when, where, and why, right? You just don't want to invite everybody and it's easy to want to invite everybody, but you just, that guest list can kind of dwindle out of control. Mm -hmm. So you got to think about your guest list, think about your venue, but start off with hiring that planner because they're going to help navigate all of that stuff for you. So first thing out the pocket, when you get engaged, I'll encourage you, not just because I am a wedding planner, but hire, hire someone. Planner. That can help you. That can help you. So starting off first is your wedding planner. Second, mm -hmm. it would be your venue. The venue. So venues can be as rustic chic, elaborate, or modern as you want them to be. But when you're looking at the venue, the it could be out in the woods. <laughs> you know, you could do a backyard wedding, um, a, garden. A, a garden, a park, when in the warmer days, because those don't really cost a lot of money if you're using a park for a wedding. Um, so that's some options to consider if you're considering about a budget and a venue. Um, it does your venue offer tables and chairs and or linens. And, rental services. Right, so those are things you need to look at. So wedding planner, venue, and then up next we have? Photography. Photography. Probably, I would say the single most important thing for your wedding is your photographer and or videographer if you want a video. Right. Um, they are usually separate. Um, so that would be something you would have to budget for. But I, because your engagement and your your dating, your 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 pre-wedding life is just but a moment. Right. But your wedding and your photos from your wedding and your videos from your wedding, that is something that you will look back on for the rest of your lives. Right. That is, I think the photography is it's important. It's, it's important. Very it's important. Very important. So, you know, on average, you can probably expect to spend around $3,000 as a baseline for a really good photographer, especially here in the Knoxville area. Unless you are you stumble upon a photographer that's kind of new and up and coming, um, they're, they're good, but they just may not have a good expanded portfolio. Um, and they're working to kind of build that portfolio and that clientele. And so, you know, they may charge a little less. And, you know, I know Princeton and I, Lori Hensley, she was just starting out when she photographed our wedding, so she didn't charge us an arm and a leg, and we got a great steal. But we still look at those images today, and we're like, oh, you know, we're still in These love with amazing. those images. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if, if you can find someone like that who's still up and coming and, you know, is working to build that portfolio, but takes in consideration lights and angles and, um, you know, has good quality editing, because that's key too, mm -hmm. you know, you could start there. So, but photographer, videographer, you're looking around probably a base of three, um, mm -hmm. 3,000. And so up next would be- Food, the cater. food, The cater. Do you, you want- have to, You need to keep your guests happy. Right. So food is your key and you can go, I mean, you need to plan your food for your venue. Um, if you're, we you probably don't want plated service out in the woods somewhere. Right. But um, that would probably be more like low key barbecue or, or right. something to that extent. Right. You've got to think about your guest um, and what will kind of work for your overall theme of your wedding because the wedding does have an overall theme. So mm -hmm. um, are we going to serve hors d'oeuvres um, during cocktail hour? Um, are we going to offer that to the guest? Do we want to plate it? Do we want buffet? Do we just want, you know, just you know, small finger foods and charcuterie boards or what have you. So those are things to consider um, that you might really take in consideration. You could do a pasta bar. We've seen that done before. Taco bar. Taco bars we've seen done before. So just, there's different options. You just gotta be creative. But if you're a big foodie and food is your main, is like your, your thing. Food is life for you. Then you might wanna make a little bigger budget for your food. And that's the good thing about when you may sit down to, to plan your budget is you know, start off with like what your max budget is. And then as you go along, what what is the most important to you? Right. Is your venue the most important or is the food or is the photography? And then you can just go through and say, okay, well, I wanna spend, you know, I want this photographer, it's gonna cost me this much. So maybe you need to take a little bit away from your your food or your flowers or right. or, or some of your other expenses so that you can have exactly what you want as far as that specific thing that you are, your goal of what you want to attain. Right, like what are you willing to splurge on? What do you feel like you can't live without? And then what's that thing, I always say to my clients, like what's that thing that you really don't too much care about? That it's okay if it doesn't, you know, but what is the one thing that you're like, I have to have and I want it and I don't care, I'm just gonna call them and get it. Mm -hmm. So up next would be our flowers. 
So for your flowers, you really need to kind of work with what's in season because that's really gonna save you some money. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got bouquets for yourself, bridal bouquets, boutonnieres, corsages. Um, flower girl attire. Flower girl, ring bear, centerpieces, alloy decor, arbor decor. Um, it could be just as elaborate or as simple as you want, but those are some of the things you need to kind of consider when you're doing your florals. Um, or are you gonna repurpose those bouquets and make those bouquets the centerpieces or what have you? So just a couple of things to think about when it comes to your florals. And then you have your DJ. Your DJ is important. He is super important. Super important. Or she. He or she is super importante. Because they are basically going to run your reception. Right. They will have your wedding planner in your ear or in their ear. They will be running the timeline right. of, of what needs to happen. Right. But your DJ is the one that will be calling it out for everyone to hear. So right. you need to have a confident, a good DJ. Right. So I met with a client yesterday in chat and um, she was looking at for DJs and she was telling me like, it's like $1,200. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. And she's like, for DJ? And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Because if you want a good competent DJ, you know, you could pay upwards into three or 4,000, but that's the thing. They're not just only DJs, they're MCs or master of ceremonies. They are the one that's kind of setting that tone for the reception, making sure there's not a lull in the reception because there's nothing worse than being a reception and it hits a dead spot and everybody's just kind of sitting there looking at each other. And they get you dancing. Yeah, so they're gonna- They get, get you, you off your feet. Right, they're gonna keep things moving with the planner in their ear telling you, Okay, it's time to cut the cake. Let's cut the cake. Let's time do this. The first dance. Right. So, splurge. I, I feel like if you need to splurge, splurge a little bit on a good DJ because that can also make or break of your reception. If your DJ is whack, it's going to be not that memorable of a reception. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have the cake. The cake is important too. Because everyone focuses on your wedding cake. You know, some people just come to a wedding for the cake. For the cake. And some people will leave after the after they have eaten the cake at your wedding. Mm -hmm. Especially some of the older guests that will wait to cut the cake. They get the little dessert and they're like, okay, it's time to go. But the cake's important. The cake is important. Cake is very important. So you gotta think about that too. How um, you elaborate. Know, the more elaborate, the more money. The more money. Do you want all these specialty fillings and all this? Yeah. So think about that too. Um, do you just want a bridal cake or do you want a groom's cake. cake too? So do you want, you know, groom's cake? So do you want both or do you want one or what have you? So those are the kind of things to really kind of consider. Um, you know, of course there's a bunch of other little small line items that we'll talk about in a later video. Um, but these are kind of some of the major, starting at the gate, these are some of the major things you need to consider. I was, what's this one, two, three, four, five, six, top six things you need to kind of focus on right at the gate. So. That way you can plan with these top six things, you can plan and see where you are at mm -hmm. financially. Right. And then the the other the other little things like your send off, your party favors, the uh, bridal party gifts, your honeymoon, everything like that. Right. That needs to go into a separate category, part of your budget, but it's the, the leftover budget. Right. Right. So these are the top six things you, you need to kind of focus on when setting that budget. Um, is there anything else we could think of? So we know that planning a wedding is, is stressful um, and at times can be chaotic. So at the gate, I would encourage you to hire a wedding planner, not just because I am a wedding planner, but it will help to bring sanity and clarity and direction for you and the people around you. Because if you're stressed out about this, guess what? You're stressing everybody else around you out about it as well. So hire your planner at the gate. They're gonna navigate and manage all of this for you um, and streamline the process for you so that you can actually enjoy this process. You know, there's nothing worse than a stressed out bride when they don't have to be stressed. That's when they turn into bridezilla. We don't want no bridezilla. No bridezilla. Um, so if you like this and you want, you know, check out our videos, keep watching some of the other ones that we posted. Be sure to like, subscribe and comment. Drop a like, it's hot. And if you haven't checked out our Facebook page, do that as well and as well as our website. By the way, we are booking like crazy in 2020. Our roster is almost full and we're already getting full for 2021. So. Get your planner. Hire him. ASAP. Hire us. Hire us. ASAP. ASAP. Bye.